On the previous video we showed how molten systems can be electrolyzed using the example of lead 2 bromide. Let's pick another one now, shall we? Let's pick magnesium chloride. Now, first of all we have to identify what ions are in the compound. Magnesium chloride is composed of magnesium ions, Mg2+, and chloride ions, Cl-. Now if we were to melt magnesium chloride we would have the positive ions going to the cathode because the cathode is negative and so the positive ions will go there and they're known as cations and at the anode which is positive we'll get the anions now anions are negative cations are positive because the cations go to the cathode and the anions go to the anode now as you can see the magnesium ions are the cations in this case so they're going to go to the cathode what's going to happen? magnesium ions are they going to gain or lose electrons? well the whole idea about being discharged is they become neutral at the end so this is already positive so it's going to gain two electrons how do we know how many it's going to gain? because it's two plus so the magnesium ions will gain two electrons they become magnesium and the chloride ions will lose electrons to become chlorine atoms how many do they lose each? well each one since it's positive uh, sorry since it's negatively charged it will lose one electron because it's singly negatively charged so it loses one electron now the thing about the anode or anode equations as these are called is we have to bear in mind that the products are often diatomic so we have to get two of these to get two of these guys we have to have two of those and two electrons Okay. So the products of this electrolysis would be magnesium at the cathode and chlorine at the anode. Okay, Taking it a tiny bit further, if you remember your oxidation and reduction, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. What happens to the magnesium ions? Will they gain electrons? So this is reduction is gain. At the cathode, reduction takes place anode, these guys lose electrons, oxidation is lost, so at the anode oxidation takes place. There you go. Let's do another example of a molten ionic compound. All right, we've done lead bromide, we've done magnesium chloride, let's do a slightly harder one, let's do aluminium oxide. Now this is also done in the extraction of aluminium that we we might cover later depending on time. First of all we've got to identify what ions are in the ionic compound. Aluminium is Al3 plus and oxygen is O2 minus. They're the ions in aluminium oxide. What happens at the cathode and what happens at the anode? The cathode is negative so the positive ions will go there. The anode is positive, so the negative ions will go there. How many will this gain when it gets there? It will gain three to become neutral. How many will this one lose? Well, each oxide ion loses two. Okay, but again, as you all know, oxygen is diatomic so we have to have two of these so to have two of these coming together to form one molecule we have to have two oxide ions and therefore this becomes four electrons so at the cathode we get aluminium as the product and this is gaining electrons so this is a reduction again aluminium ions are reduced to aluminium metal and we get that at the cathode and oxide ions become oxygen by losing electrons so this is an oxidation okay we could also use oxidation numbers for those of you that know what they are the oxidation number of this is three because it's the same as the charge on the ion so this has an oxidation of three plus oxidation number of three plus pure elements or elements have oxidation numbers of zero so it's gone from three plus to zero that's a reduction in oxidation number so, and therefore it's a reduction. <clears throat> oxide, this has an oxidation number of minus two. It's the same as the charge on the ion. This goes to zero, so minus two to zero is an increase in oxidation number, therefore, therefore an oxidation. And that's that. Okay, one last, one last example 
of a uh, molten system. Okay. Let's pick sodium fluoride. Again, identify the ions. Na plus, F minus, cathode equation. Cathode is negative. Anode equation. Anode is positive. Which one of these guys goes to the cathode? The positive. Na plus. And obviously the fluoride ion goes to the cathode. Uh, sorry, the anode. This guy, how many electrons will it gain? Well, it's got a charge of plus one. So it's plus one electron. Forms Na plus. So sodium is formed at the cathode. Fluoride is going to lose how many electrons? One, because it's got a charge of minus one. So there it is. It becomes a fluorine atom plus one electron. As you know, it's a group seven, so it must, we must show its diatomicity. So it's F2, two, and two. The products are sodium at the cathode, fluorine at the anode. Molten systems are very straightforward. They will always have one positive ion and one negative ion. The positive ion will always go to the cathode. The negative ion will always go to the anode. The positive ion will always gain electrons. The negative ion will always lose electrons. It's always the same. And the thing about molten systems is because there's only two species in the compound, the positive ion and the negative ion in this case, um, it's very easy. It will always be one of these or one of these. Now on our course we are to deal with what we call binary ionic compounds. Let me write this here very quickly. Binary compounds. These are the only ones you have to deal with. Now what that means is binary means two, so it's going to have only two elements in, such as magnesium oxide, sodium chloride. They'll all fall under this. They'll all fall under the idea of having one positive ion and one negative ion. Okay, that's it for molten ionic systems. Next, I'll deal with the more complicated aqueous ionic systems.